try to help pronounce. Great. Uh, well, uh, here to announce that uh, this afternoon at the, our board meeting, we did approve the Foxconn transaction. And um, this is an exciting day for the state of Wisconsin. Um, as, as I've said a few times, uh, you know, what, what our goal in, in this whole transaction, it started 28 weeks ago on Friday, has been to provide the company the kind of flexibility and latitude that they need to, to invest up to $10 billion, create 13,000 jobs here in the state of Wisconsin. Um, and at the same time, create certainty around uh, the protection for the taxpayers. And I, and, uh, I think what we, we've done on a collective basis uh, has been able to put together a contract that reflects and achieves both of those goals. So I feel really good about where we are. We had a great conversation in the, in the board meeting um, and a lot of very good points. And uh, so with that, uh, yeah, we're excited about the opportunity for the state to move forward. What was the roll call? The, the vote was 8 to 2. Was there any discussion about why this, what, why you believe there are appropriate safeguards in here for taxpayers? Why can you tell the people in the state who might be hearing about this? What assurances can you give them that the taxpayer dollars will be managed appropriately? Well, I, I think throughout the, the contract, and you'll see the contract shortly, you, you'll see that there are several protections that are in place for the, con for the, um, for the taxpayer relative to that. And again, the key, the, the, fine line was to find a way to balance the needs of the company with the needs of the state. This is a huge investment. It's, it's a complex deal. Um, and I think we've been able to do that. Two votes for Lox and Carpenter? You would have to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Wax is over here. No, it's a it, it's a ten billion dollar deal, um, but they'll only earn uh, tax credits for capital expenditures up to nine billion dollars. So that's how you get to a billion three fifty. It's fifteen percent of nine billion, but they estimate that it'll be a ten billion dollar investment. And really, the difference is when you look at it, um, the the hundred fifty million dollars that they would have earned on the last billion dollar of investment from nine to ten billion would be the the estimate as to what the state sales tax exemption would provide them. Can you explain for members of the public the best you can the metrics or the job numbers that the company will have to meet to get this the state funding? Well, it's a 15-year deal, so it's, it's complicated from that standpoint. But in any given year, the company is committed to retaining a certain number of jobs. Um, and uh, there's a minimum number. Uh, of jobs, and if they're below that minimum, they don't get tax credits. If they're above it, they get the tax credits at a 17% rate uh, based on the wages that are paid for full-time employees that have benefits. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's simple from that perspective, but it's complicated because it, it lays in over a 15-year period of time. So, um, you know, I, I think what you can say is that over, uh, over any period of time that after this operation gets up and running, the minimum number of jobs that the company has committed to would be 6,500, which if they went below that amount would um, allow the state to claw back the tax credits that they, certain portions of the tax credits they have issued. Um, but in general, you know, they're, uh, th we've had a lot of conversations obviously with the company over the last 28 weeks, and we're very confident of their commitment to make this investment in the state, and they want to get going on it. And uh, obviously they're working with Racine County and uh, Pleasant Prairie as well to to get their agreement in place. When's it going to be signed? 
We'll sign the contract on Friday afternoon. There have been some people who've had concerns about what happens in the longer period of time with Foxconn. This is a 15-year contract. It goes till 2032. Do you have any concern that later down the line there could be automation that could lead to the loss of these jobs? You mean beyond the 15-year period? The contract is for 15 years. That, that's the commitment that's, that we've made to the company relative to paying tax credits. Uh, that's the commitment that they've made to us relative to uh, maintaining the jobs. You know, if they come to the year 16 and, and they've made a decision that they're going to do something else, to get to that point, keep in mind that you really, this is going to be, this will be successful. And if you get to the 15th year, you're looking at it, if they're creating, thir if they've got 13,000 people and they've invested $10 billion, I doubt highly that they would turn around and turn the lights off. How much did you look at the issue of the product itself and the product line and the viability of it? Obviously, televisions and display screens is an incredibly com competitive marketplace. How confident are you that they will be successful for years and years to come? We're, we're, we're confident from the standpoint that this is a company that over the last 43 years has been a leader in, in the technology. They have, um, they have been on the front edge of all of the technology changes. They're significant, they're very successful from a financial performance standpoint. And part of that, a big part of their, their success has been because they have been able to ad adapt and change and really move the market, which is what they'll be doing with the investment here in the state of Wisconsin. So um, yes, there's risk in any investment. There's risk with them. They, they acknowledge that risk in coming to the United States, coming to Wisconsin to do that. But it's really, you know, it's a similar risk that any business has when they go through the construction and, and taking on a um, significant construction project and then trying to get something up and running. Mark, if they were only created the 6,500 jobs and spend the $9 million, would they get half the money then, or how much money total would they get? You know, I'd have to go through the math on that, but, you know, if there's a minimum number of jobs that they would have to maintain, and, and that's somewhere that's north of the 6,500, but between the 6,500 and the 13,000. But our analysis would be that if they only hit the minimum number of jobs that would qu qualify for them for tax credits, they would earn about two-thirds of the, the jobs-related tax credits, or about just over a billion dollars of the billion five. Can you speak to um, Terry Dow's personal guarantee on this deal that he's made, um, how significant that is, and if that came away from the negotiating process? Uh, Terry Goh has been on, on board with this from virtually from day one. Uh, it's a significant commitment in my prior life. Uh, having somebody personally guarantee something uh, is, is significant. And uh, to have Terry personally guarantee this uh, of, of the magnitude that it is, um, I think it really speaks to the level of commitment and confidence that he has that this is going to be a great investment, not just, not just for him, but for the state of Wisconsin as well. Can you speak at all to it's been part of the deal for a long time. Um, more questions? Can you speak at all to any of the reasons why the vote wasn't taken on October 17th as originally scheduled, just to clear, clear the air on that? Well, the clear to the air on it is I, I never talk about uh, contract negotiations when we're negotiating contracts, so we were still negotiating contracts at that point. No, but you're not? Or no, we're not. We've, you know, you, you'll receive the contract today. Um, we have we have basically signed off on anything, and the only thing that's required right now are the, the signatures, which we'll have on, on Friday afternoon. But now that you're not negotiating, can you speak to what was the hang-up I'm not going to go through the negotiations. I think it's been a great process. Uh, Secretary Neitzel and I have been actively engaged in this from day one. Um, uh, we have, I think one thing that I'd want to stress is that just the team that we have at WEDC, at Department of Administration, Revenue, the DNR, Department of Workforce Development, what the people from the UW system, Marquette University, the academic side, the tech colleges, everybody has been involved in this transaction earlier, from earlier on when a lot of people didn't even know about it. A lot of those people were involved. And that's the reason that Foxconn and Terry Goh has made the decision to move this facility to Wisconsin is because what they saw under Governor Walker's leadership, the fact that we've made big changes over the past few years, uh, the opportunity that's here, but it's at the end of the day, it's the relationships that they that the Foxconn people have developed with the people in Wisconsin at every level in this state, in, in a lot of different ge geographies, it's really what has driven the day. Did WDC calculate the value of the, of the manufacturing and ag credit for the company? Is that part of the contract? We did not. You don't, so 
you don't know what the value of that is in terms of negotiating this deal? Uh, we did not. Because that's available to everybody that comes to the, that's in the state that's in manufacturing and agriculture. Can you speak to any secondary investments the company might make? Those have been, you know, hinted at in prior months. Jason, I'm trying to get past this one. <laughs> I have one more question. I, I really, to answer your question, I, I really don't. I mean, there's a lot of things. People have talked about the, the medical group having conversations with UW and people here in Madison. And we think, you know, those continue on, and we think that's a great opportunity. But I, I will tell you that um, Foxconn wants to do business with the state of Wisconsin. They want to hire our residents. They want to hire our people that are here. They want to use the supply chain that's here. Uh, every step of the way, that's, that's what we've been able to do. So, again, I, I'm proud of the fact that we were able to get this to this point. Uh, I think it's a significant achievement on the part of the state. And we look forward to the next few years when Foxconn becomes uh, the uh, really a premier company, not just in the state, but in the United States. Okay, thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Secretary. Folks, Representative Watts is available for questions if you have any for him. I voted no. Um, my rationale is that $3 billion uh, spent on one company within one industry is a, is a risk that I think uh, is too much for our, our taxpayers. I think we need to be accountable for taxpayer dollars, and I think $3 billion into one industry that's prone to technological changes uh, is too much. David, just to clarify, so it was you and Tim Carper that voted against it? Yes. Well, I, I think my understanding is this may be the largest uh, deal struck with a state and a, and a manufacturer in the history of the United States. I believe that's true. Um, and it's just too much for one industry, uh, for one company within one industry. I mean, to think about the magnitude of $3 billion, what could you do if you were say going to invest three billion dollars into startups you could have ten thousand startups funded at three hundred thousand apiece which would breed a, a diverse and a robust economy statewide not just in one region of the state so these are the types of concerns I have uh, with this what do you say to those who might criticize your vote as I held off my judgment on this issue until I received uh, documents to, to review and take a hard look at. And that's, that's, that was available for the press right from the start. It was about two weeks into this. I had hoped that this would, a, would be a deal that I could support, but it, it just is too much. Uh, there are, it's just too much money uh, to, for this deal. Do you feel that taxpayers are protected with the fallback provisions or no? In some circumstances, yes, and some not. But it uh, there's been a lot of work done on those, um, and there's no question about that. But but the the, the 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 and you'll have the contract shortly. I think that this deal is too risky, in general. Again, because of the nature of the of the of the beast that we're investing, three billion dollars in one, in one company within one industry. Would you agree that the changes to the contract? from the legislation have improved it or, or made it uh, more protection protector? I'm not entirely um, certain what the negotiations were until I've just gotten into this uh, deal, but I think there were modifications. I, saying, I know that there the were modifications. that you voted on when it was in Well, the legislation was more broad. This is when you start to get down to the def defining the, you know, the particulars of a contract, it's, it's kind of a different animal. I think if we would have uh, maintained our environmental protections, uh, that's a dangerous precedent to be waiving 
uh, some of our environmental protections. Um, you know, it, it could be that other companies are going to want to come here and, and do similar deals in terms of environmental protections. I have problems with that um, because, you know, I've been a hunter and a fisherman my whole life, and we need to protect this environment. If you're, if you're elected and you take office in January 2019, what are you going to do? Well, you got to take a hard look at it and make sure that they're they're coming through with their uh, uh, their representations. Um, you've got to avoid situations where we would get sued uh, by Foxconn. We're going to have to if the contract is a done deal, it's a done deal. Um, we're going to closely monitor it and make sure uh, you know that uh, they're up to up to speed with their representations. We'll put a punch list together functionally to make sure that that uh, whatever they've Agreed to do is going to get done. I I'm against this deal, though. I but want the record. But you wouldn't necessarily walk away from it as governor. Well, I you if, if you progress. Scott Walker walked away from the high speed rail obligations when he first got here, and what that did is it got us sued. First, we didn't we didn't end up with the high speed rail. Secondly, we get we got sued by Telgo uh, for not following through with uh, contracts. Contracts are serious documents. Contracts are very. Uh, serious representations on behalf of both parties, so we got to take a hard look at it, if and or when that occurs. Would you repeal the manufacturing ag credit if you were elected? In general? Uh, would you repeal the uh, manufacturing ag credit? Well, in in some fields it's it's helpful, but in others it's not been uh, helpful at all in terms of job creation. So a blanket yes or no is. Well, is as it, as it, this company obviously benefiting. Well, what you got to remember is, you know, what is the cost of of bringing jobs to Wisconsin? Uh, for no cost, Scott Walker could have said yes to uh, Medicaid expansion, zero cost there, and jobs would have gone up, I think, in the ten thousand range. Um, so now we're spending three billion dollars, uh, functionally cash, uh, to bring these jobs in. It's too expensive. So, so you are saying you would kill some of it, or you're not saying? The general program across the board in the statutes, I, you know, I would have to take a look at it. We have time for one more question. If anyone has the last question, can you clarify what you're saying, Todd? You, had, you, you guys asking me about um, in some circumstances um, you would not. Um, uh, you didn't give an example as to where this deal. I don't is. remember what Todd's question. You had said, sir, that. Uh, in some circumstances, you call taxpayers are protected. In some circumstances, well, the contract will be if the if the company, uh, you know, if if there's a massive change in the industry, if the company fails. I mean, there's questions uh, as to how how uh, protected we are in this. I'm against the whole deal, flat out. Yeah, what circumstances and, are we protected? Well, the contract will be out in a couple of minutes. Um, there there are some clawback provisions, but they only operate. Uh, and you'll see in the contract, uh, in, in there's there's a sub A through through uh, D when when those uh, provisions uh, take effect. You you really have to see the contract before we can get into that. All right, thank you. Guys. All right, thank you. Thank you. And we will be bringing hard copies of the contract down in just a few minutes. If you guys can hang out, I'll I'll email PDFs as well. But we're waiting for something to print off and bring it back. Could you check Kathy's? Could you check with Kathy?